what could be the worst offender when it comes to reasons you're losing in Salmon Run? There are probably a lot of differing opinions on the matter and likely a lot of logical reasons one might have a hard time progressing and winning in Salmon Run. But one of them, and in my opinion the worst offender, is simply playing at the wrong time. Hey there, it's Haz here, and today I'd like to talk about map rotation in Salmon Run a bit, as at the time of this video the current Salmon Run map is, well let's just say it's not the best. And that's being very generous. If you ever wondered why you might be getting bad teams or keep losing in Salmon Run even though you think you're playing well, or doing decent teamwork across the waves, yet somehow you still have these long losing streaks despite having an easier time just a few days ago? The answer is simple, it's the map rotation. Salmon Run in Splatoon 3 changes its map and weapons rotation every two days or so and thus the rewards reset too, which is one of the reasons we play this game mode to get those sweet tickets or capsules. Salmon Run has a very delicate balance when it comes to succeeding in the game mode and a lot of times it requires nothing less but perfect team play in order to win. But if anything goes wrong, a team may get splatted in the wrong location, a boss doesn't get splatted in time, or simply the combination of salmonid spawning is not advantageous for your current weapons, it's a wrap. This weekend's rotation is perfect example of a salmon run that you should probably just avoid altogether if you get frustrated losing or you aim to climb the ranks of this game mode. But why exactly? Well, first of all, in my opinion, the maps for Salmon Run are not balanced in the first place and I think spawning grounds is the hardest stage by a mile. The supposedly safe platforms are railings you can't ink and makes them a death trap. The high points are not exactly high enough to give enough room for protection. The shores are very long and go deep into the sea where you will likely get surrounded. And then last but not least, the high tide on the stage corners you so much that there's barely any room to move. Normally, each time someone queues up for Salmon Run, you just hope you get a good team and hope for the best. But there's more to it than that. Maps as I described have differing difficulties, but the weapon rotations are crucial too and in certain cases I would say it's simply not recommended to run Salmon Run if your aim is to win. And that is because the odds are greatly stacked against you and this weekend is such time. But let's dive in why. I will use this weekend's rotation as an example for this video, but it can be applied to any other rotation to determine if it's a good time to play or not. The current weapon rotation is Dynamo Roller, Crash Blaster, Tri Stringer and the Mini Splatling. Are these bad weapons? Absolutely not. They're formidable and good weapons themselves, but they have terrible weaknesses and in my opinion especially on spawning grounds. Three out of the four weapons require a decent amount of turf to be able to perform safely I would say the Dynamo Roller, the Tri Stringer and even the Mini Splatling. While they are able to have a good amount of painting done fast, they are also very ink hungry and you will quickly run out of ink and find yourself in a dangerous situation. If you scroll back just a little bit, I mentioned Spawning Grounds is the map with the worst cases of cornering the player and also having the least amount of space during high tide and it's very obvious with the current weapons. But I still think all these weapons are very strong and I also cleared 3 waves multiple times now Yet I have to say I was likely lucky that we got good bosses and special waves against us as each time we got too many fish sticks or steel eels we just simply ran out of space to move and there was nothing we could have done with the young hungry weapons we had. While the dynamo roller is really good at clearing hordes and inking, 2-3 swings that takes considerable amount of time will completely consume your ink tank and if by then you're still not safe, you just won't have time to refill and have another shot at swinging. You are not good at going for eggs and you are practically useless if anything spawns far away at the shores. The mini splatling while very fast at charging up is nowhere near as good at inking as its normal versions and lacks the firepower to deal with tougher bosses as efficiently as others and runs into the same problem that it just runs out of space fast. It's a balanced splatling that I think excels at nothing in Salmon Run. The Clash Blaster is probably the most capable of the current rotation for my taste as it has decent balance out of keeping itself safe. But Salmon Run is about teamwork and one weapon cannot make sure everyone has enough space and also the Clash Blaster is simply not the best for that. That is when we get to the Tri Stringer which in the current rotation is the weapon that is the best and supposed to only focus on making sure the whole team has space to move. Otherwise I really just don't see how else you can succeed. Normally each weapon can relatively play rogue alone and with proper play survive the waste but I think the current rotation is about teamwork. And well, as we talked about it in yesterday's video, that's not exactly everyone's strong suit, not to mention we don't have a lot of communication options. The way I see it, these weapons rely on each other a lot, 
and if played properly it's very effective combination as each of them are excellent at specific roles, but they are all extremes. If you manage to make sure everyone focuses on what they're good at, they work. And that is exactly why rotation such as this one is dangerous to play with, because not everyone is good at playing with extremes. I talked about the difficulty of the map, and I also mentioned my personal opinion and concerns when it comes to weapon rotations and specific weapons you can get in Salmon Run that I would avoid if they have too much going against them. But there's one last reason and attribute of Salmon Run that's always worth investigating when you play, and that is if the weapons are popular or not. If we look at the current weapons, 3 out of 4 weapons are simply unpopular weapons, and not like this general consensus goes. Dynamo Roller is considered one of the hardest weapons in the game. Splatlings are still somewhat of a harder weapon type for a lot, as charging mechanic is considered advanced, and Tri Stringers are a complete new weapon type added in Splatoon 3, that also have charging mechanism and unique directional shots. The Clash Blaster is the only weapon that I think we can safely say anyone can play with, and probably have no problem playing with, but if we consider statistics, chances are every single game at least 2 out of 4 players will be uncomfortable with their current weapon they receive. So what does that tell you? That even if you can play with all of the weapons properly, which is likely not the case, two other teammates of yours probably have no idea how to play their weapon well, and on top of it, they don't even like using them in the first place. So what I'm trying to say is that simply if the weapons are very niche, that you get in the rotation, the performance of your team will also greatly drop, and it's worth considering whether you should queue up in the first place. But the very opposite is also true actually. When Salmon Run gets a really easy rotation, people have an easy time to rank up to higher levels of professional or even executive VP, and then get overwhelmed the next two days later on the new stage as they likely got to a rank they are not prepared yet. That is also something that happens a lot if you're playing solo queue. You should really think about this or even let the system balance the ranks again since Salmon Run is really volatile when it comes to players' ranks. Dodging a rotation can leave you in a good position while the system sorts out the weak, pardon my wording, and it will match you with more formidable allies later. I personally wish there was a somewhat deeper system to Salmon Run, maybe even similar to the current rank system of Splatoon 3 where you would have to do rank up battles that you have to succeed with, as it is too easy to jump between ranks right now, resulting in frustrating matches for most people. Whether it is because you get worse teammates, or yes, even by getting to a rank you don't enjoy because you are just not ready for it yet. Now this video ended up being maybe a little bit too analytical and perhaps a bit too subjective on my part, but I wanted to chime in a little bit considering how many people are surprised by the current map and its difficulty. While this might still be a little bit too dodgy to simply not play Salmon Run in certain rotations, I personally still do it as I enjoy the game mode whether I win or lose. I wanted to just make this video for those who really feel frustrated and just want to have a better time as time when you queue up simply matters a lot and if you aim to climb those ranks, these are points you should think about. But I would be very curious what you all think about this topic or what you think about the current map, even if you watch this video later after it's long gone. Salmon Run is a lot of fun and the roguelike element of random weapons is something I love about it, but I have to admit sometimes it's painful and is by far the hardest part of the game mode. But good luck everyone with this stage, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye bye